So what we have had by far in 177 in terms of Python, which is a very interesting language, programming language, is uh, we know what's the integer expressions, the numbers, something like that, they are the integer expressions. They have evaluate, they evaluate an integer value, as you can see here. Let me see if I can bring it down even. It's much easier. Okay. okay. So the rules for integer expression are obvious. That's exactly the same as the high school arithmetic things you know. I don't want to read through all the things. In terms of the next thing we have, that's division. You know that. This is the uh, symbol we use for division. Uh, this is the integer division. What does it mean? It means if you divide two integer values, the result would be an integer. So if you divide seven by two, it won't be 3.5, it will be three. Okay. And we have a reminder using the percentage uh, symbol. So if you use the percentage symbol, it will give you the reminder of the division. So if you need to divide something, but you are looking for the reminder of the division, this would be your, the solution, reminding after dividing. So for example, eight, reminder of division of eight by three is two because we have two times of three, which is six, and then we have two. Okay, so you can check the reality or you can do the reality check. What is the reality check? The reality check is you can do, uh, you can check to see if that's true or not. In terms of variable, you know why we use the variables. We use the variables to put the integer inside something, which we can use it later, manipulate it, play with it, etc. So instead of passing four to the program, we can pass A. And then later in the middle of the program and algorithm, etc., we can change A. We can change B. We can manipulate it. Okay, so you know that's the reason why we use the variable. That's a difference here in Python with some other languages like C, C, etc. Over there, you need to define the, the variable in the beginning, say what is the type of variable, if it is an integer, if it is a uh, character, if it is a string, if it is a uh, float, etc., and then assign value to that, or at the same time, define and assign it. But in Python, you don't need to define the variable in advance. Just uh, when you assign something to a variable, immediately you uh, define what is the type of the variable. Okay. We have the Boolean expression, two famous Boolean expression, true and false, which we use to evaluate some sort of the comparison condition, etc. You should make sure true with the small t is not that true with false t. That's the name of variable. If I put true, that means I'm talking about the variable or something like that. That's not a Boolean expression. So make sure you pay attention to that. And using this Boolean expression, we can do comparison. You know that we can compare if i is less than 100, less than equal, equal, not equal, greater than equal, and greater than 100. Make sure you understand that's that's the condition, that's not assignment, okay? So we use a true and false to compare something. Okay, Boolean operation. We have and, or, and not. Sometimes we want to uh, compare more than one condition. We are working on more than one condition. If I is less than 100, and if a reminder of I and two division of I and two is zero, or is I is even number, okay? So you want to check if this happens and this happens at the same time, then I can do something. So that's the reason we use and. Or sometimes I want to say, if this happened or this happened, I want to do something. So we can use or. Or sometimes you can say, if this doesn't happen, if this won't happen, I want to do something. So you know that then. So that was the Boolean expression. We have the string in here. A string is a sequence of characters. Yeah, you have more than one character, that's a string, that's a string. You can assign the string to a variable. You can know what is the length of the uh, string you have decided. You can, interestingly, you can concatenate a variable of type string to another string. So that means you can concatenate two strings together and the result would be something like that. Pay attention to the space we have in here and that the space appears in here. So if I didn't put a space in here, that means these two strings would connect it together. So we can play with them. Or we can multiply it. If I have a string, something like this string, 
I have, I want to multiply it five times. That's the interesting thing. It's not as easy as it is in Python in other languages like C or C++, it's C or C++, Java, etc. If you want to do something like that, it is more crazy thing than in Python. So we can enjoy the Python. So, and in string, we can have access to different, uh, and in string, we can have access to different location of the string. For example, if I have a string S, I want to know what is the third character inside the string, I can have access to that. But it is a good idea to know in usually in computer science, and computer programming in, in uh, specifically, we start with zero, not one. So that means this one is index zero, one, two, three, four. So that's not, although we have five characters in this string, it is not started, it is not finished by five and started from one. It is started from zero and finished by four. So for example, S zero is H, S one is E, I is four, or you can address a specific location in the string this way. You can define a variable like I and then say S of I, which is O, which is the last one here. You can have more than one character at the same time. You can say string S from one to three. That's zero, that's one. So it is started from E, two, and three means don't take three into account. Just please finish before three. So that means one and two. This one means one, by the end. So from, from E, we go to the end. This one means from the beginning to four, before four, that means three. So we we'll start here, zero, one, two, three. We we'll finish by here. And we say everything. So that's kind of a little bit crazy because if you say S, that's the same thing, okay? Sometimes you want to take some uh, input and variables from the keyboard, from the user, instead of putting something inside the program. So we use the input. Input will give us whatever we want for the integer. And if that's a string, we'll say raw input. That will, that will do the same, but for the strings. And the output to print a variable, something, a message or something like that in the terminal, we can use print. Print an integer, print a variable, print a, a kind of string variable, print more than a variable or a number, etc. So we can print everything in this way, okay? So it is a good idea to know in programming language terminology, an expression is, we have a question. Let's see, no, we didn't have a question. So in programming language terminology, terminology uh, expression is a combination of value and function. So we have a difference between expression and a statement. A statement is just an standalone, standalone thing which do something, it's not a function. So print is an, a statement, it's not an expression, okay? Let's jump to the if a statement. If a statement is where you want to compare something, if something happens, then do something. If Boolean expressions happens, then do some, some sort of the thing. If n is an even number, so make it half, okay? If the division of n by two is zero, so the reminder of division of n and two is zero, which is even number, then make it half. Okay, we can add more uh, condition of checking into the if by adding else and uh, else with helper. So we say if that expression happens, do something otherwise or else do something else. Okay, if that expression happens, the same example we can see. Here. If you have more conditional checking, we can use elif before else. So I will start with if, then elif, then else. It will be more than one elif. If, elif, 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 and then at the end of the day, else. Else is usually something is a diff as a default. If all these com conditions doesn't happen, then please stop it and do us this thing, okay? So elif will help us to have more conditional checking. Sometimes you want to repeat something as a loop. You want to repeat, 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 by when? Until a condition happens. So you use while loop. It is called while loop, okay? An example, I will cut it, I will take a, an integer, I will take an integer from the user. I will set a counter as zero. I'll say if the counter is, uh, if the counter is zero less than n, let's say n is five. Yes, then print i, 
print the counter number, add the counter back here. If i, which is 1 now, is less than 5, print i, which is 1, increment it back here. Continue until i gets to 5, which is equal to n, and is not less than 5, so it is not um, complied, so we finish the thing. So you have the while loop, and while loop is for repeating a specific uh, line of codes until some criteria happen. So that's the uh, while loop pattern we discussed, we talked about. So you have something like that. There is something interesting in Python, which is uh, important to pay attention to, and that's the matter of block of code. What does it mean? Block of code means uh, in other languages like C, C++, if I want to say in the while loop, how many line of the code should be executed, I will add a brace in here, and I finish at the end of the line with a brace, another brace, something like that, something like this, okay? But in Python, we don't have that. So how a program should know, how compiler should know if inside the while loop, should I execute only this one or also this one? So which one we should go for? So that's the question. So uh, indention is the solution. In Python, we have identation, identation, so we should have, we should use the identation. What does it mean? We should keep a specific distance from here to here, for the all, all the lines which I want to keep inside the while loop. If I bring I uh, actually delete this space and bring it back to here, while loop will execute only the print function, print line of code. Okay. So if I want to have both lines, I should keep this space in here. And it is recommended to use a space inside instead of the tab for doing that. Never use tab unless in your editor you set the tab. Tab is like for a space. Tab is like three space. It's not important if your space is three, four, five, or something like that. That's up to you. And um, in terms of if you want, if you see that how it is more beautiful, three space, four space, five space, and so on. So it is okay. So never use tab. But if you want to use tab for this matter, please make sure you are um, setting the tab as a space. And we have the list. This is something you can put sequence of elements inside that. That element should be a, could be any type of the variable. It could be an integer, it could be a string, it could be another list even, and so on. So you define the list. A is a list of integer, integers in here. I want to count how many numbers I have, how many elements I have inside this list, length of A. I want to say, what is the second, the third element of the list? You know, we start from zero. So this one, this one, this one, the third element is this. And also we can play with that. We can delete something from the end of the list. We can say pop, that's a built-in, that's a built-in function, pop. So if you say this list dot pop, parentheses, that means it will delete 12 from your list. So if you print the list again, you will see you don't have 12. We can append something to it, we can say, a append 33, so 33 will be added to, at the end of the list. And you can change something inside the list. You can say the third element of the list, I want to be changed to seven. So the third element will be changed to seven and it's not 99 anymore, okay? And we can take a specific part, a slice of the uh, list, as you can see here. We can say from the third element by the end, one, two, three, the third. Interestingly, that's a list again. That's a good point. You create, you generate another list from this list by taking a part of that. Or you can say from the beginning, before two, that means zero and one, the first two are value, values and elements. So we are here to the end of the uh, lecture one.